Alright, so a long time has passed since I've done anything with the center console, but um, I've got it just about to the point where I'm going to be able to cover it with foam and leather, which I am not going to do. It will be the only thing on this car I haven't done myself, with the exception of having the rear end cut down. The machine shop had to do that, but otherwise I've done everything. And uh, I just don't want to buy a sewing machine. And I'm um, getting too close to the end of the project. Like I can feel the end coming. So I don't want to waste any time. Anyway, um, this is the center console that in the previous video you saw. And uh, a lot has changed on the car since then, which you'll see in a minute. But it goes to show that, um, for me anyway, this had to get started really early in the overall you know, process of finishing because it's to me it's all driven by how the wires are going to run in the car and there's a lot of stuff going on in the center console that interacts with the engine and you know other sort of electronic functions of the car that it, it needs to become a a part of the whole program earlier rather than later so uh, as you saw in previous videos um, I don't even I don't even think the car was painted when I first started this and I know that the interior like the soundproofing and all that wasn't put in but anyway now that stuff's done and you'll see this uh, in the car in just a minute but I wanted to explain a little bit about what's going on here so just to recap I built the uh, carcass of this out of half inch sand ply really inexpensive very lightweight and certainly light enough for what I'm doing and um, uh, no, you can look at previous videos to figure out how I came up with the shape um, I think in the last video I didn't have this piece on I, I mentioned it and I showed a little cardboard mock-up of it but this is generally the finished version. I say generally, I'll explain when you see it in the car why I might have to tweak this a little bit. But uh, just to explain some of the stuff that's going on, this is the Ron Francis iStart system. So it's a keyless um, ignition. It's got a touch button right here that um, when it's all plugged in, and it, it works great, you know, I've been using it to test drive the car and everything. When it's just sitting there and there's no key fob, and this is what the key fob looks like, when there's no key fob around, this button just kind of pulses red every so often just to say it's kind of in security mode, like it can't be started. Once you approach it with the key fob, that goes solid red, which means it's ready to start. And then you press, you touch it once to turn on accessories, uh, touch it again, I think, to start the car um, or maybe you can just hold your finger on it to start the car I can't remember and then you touch it three times to shut off the car clutch has to be in and the brake has to be in uh, to do it so pretty much like a modern car but there'll be there's a lot more about Ron Francis in a different video anyway that's something that's in the center console had to be thought of these courtesy lights there's one here and there's one on the other side which can't really see right now. There's just the, the um, cup for it that I routed out. There's uh, a dual port USB right here. This is a, um, a quick charge. So it's, I don't know how many amps, but basically this goes, there's a USB cables attached to this and it goes to the trunk to uh, something that gets mounted behind the rear seat. It's got a little voltage indicator on it, it's digital, and it's got two USB ports. So the power will go there, and this came with six feet of wire, and that's enough to reach back there. So um, that's what will be used for charging phone or tablet. This is USB and an eighth inch audio jack. That goes to my radio, which it's a retro sound, it looks, you know, just like the original radio, you'll see in a minute, but it's completely modern. It's got Bluetooth, and it even has a port to plug in an XM 
receiver, which I'm not going to use. I use XM, but not in this car. Um, these are the passenger side front and rear window buttons, driver side front and rear window buttons, the ignition we already talked about. This cup holder came from, um, I just got it on Amazon, it's like 10 bucks or something, I think it goes in like a Yukon, but it fits in here perfectly, and when this thing's in, I have plenty of room for my arm and a drink. I wasn't going to do any cup holders, because I couldn't find a good place to, to put them. I thought maybe here, but they're kind of in the way of the shifter, if there's anything in them. I thought about Frenching them into here, but that's an awful lot of work, and uh, it makes covering it in leather uh, that much more difficult. And then I realized I had so much room up here that this is a good place for it. This is hinged. The hinge will come off, of course, to get covered and then be put back on. And inside here is another USB that um, goes to the uh, HP tuner interface on the OBD2 port. So the, or the data link connector, whatever you want to call it. So I can hook the laptop up here and tune the car, or I can data log or whatever. Um, it's a daily driver for me, so any data logging I do will just be to, to gather data for the original tune. The car is generally tuned. It runs great, but it needs to be tuned uh, for wide open throttle also, which I got to really have it on the road to do that. And I need the computer running, you know, like maybe take a 30 minute drive and just data log the whole thing and under a bunch of different conditions. That should give enough information to, to do the tune. <clears throat> um, I looked at length for latches for this, but in the end I ended up, uh, I ended up deciding to go with magnets. And I don't know how many, like these magnets, like they don't cost hardly anything. And they're wicked strong, like crazy strong. So I'm going to start with one magnet here and one in here. I'm just going to use a Forstner bit to, um, to sink them down into the wood and hold them in with epoxy. And uh, I'll actually do the hole and then after this has been finished by the upholsterer, I'll come back and cut that out and glue the magnet in then. And if one doesn't cut it, I'm going to switch to three, uh, just for symmetry reasons. The thought of doing two offset ones just turns my stomach. But just from holding these things, I'd be shocked if one, didn't, one pair didn't do it. Anyway, I'm going to put a little finger hole in this. So, even if I do use three and they're crazy strong, I don't open it enough for it to be an issue. I'd rather it stay um, connected than uh, you know, run the risk of the thing flopping around. These two buttons right here are for the door poppers. So, this one would do the passenger door popper and this would do the driver's one. This is um, when the car is running. Um, I think I think I'm going to set it up where when the car is running, the door poppers are disabled. But I'm not sure. I, I might put a little bypass switch in because I, I don't know about the safety of that. I'm in a convertible, so it's hard to get trapped in a convertible anyway. But still, um, at the very least, when the car's off and you when you pull up where you're going, you press this button and the door pops open. The door poppers work great. Uh, I abandoned the brain that came with the door poppers and I replaced it with a couple relays. It's a 35 amp uh, deal, so it, it's pretty significant. Like if this were a house, that the door poppers would be the equivalent of your oven or your dryer. So it's a fairly significant load. And uh, there was no good way to control it with, a, with these little micro switches which use like a half an amp. Um, so, I'm connecting the door poppers to an accessory port on the Ron Francis iStart. So, my key fob that I'll keep in my pocket to start the door will also give me the door popper control, um, which is, you know, all I really need. 
there's no door locks on my car because there's no door handles. So no need for door locks. Anyway, all this stuff will run out the back of the front as needed. Um, you know, all these cables. And uh, only two of these cables have to actually be connected to anything. And they're the door popper cables. So I'm going to, uh, you know, I'll connect them when I install this thing the final time. But right now I'm going to shut off the camera and put this in the car and then let you see what that looks like. So as I was preparing to put the center console in, I realized that it's probably pretty helpful to see what's under the center console. There's uh, plenty of video on the wiring of this car, so you can look at that to understand what all this is. But generally, I wired it so that I had two primary chunks of wire coming from the front to the back of the car. And um, there's a couple things here that go just to the center console. These are the two plugs for the uh, power windows. Uh, there's a ground here, another power line here that goes to the um, to power those two little buttons that open the door poppers, and a couple other things. Um, way up in here, there's the plugs that go to the iStart system. So they all plug right in. You'll be able to actually access those, get down on the floor and look behind the center console. So once it's in, I'll be able to have access to those if I need them. The only thing you'd really need is to be able to see and replace the fuses, which are on the side of that thing. And um, they're you know, very accessible, so it'll work out fine. All right, so now let me put the console in. So there it is installed. Um, it pretty simple to go in there. It you know fits just like planned, I guess. Um, there's not a whole lot to say really about it. <clears throat> the only reason that it's not covered yet is I need my carpet in because right now the very front of it. You can point to it. So right here, it actually doesn't touch the bottom of the, of the dash. It goes up just past it. So it may be that once I put the carpet in, it all um, fits in there fine. I suspect it's going to be a little bit too snug. So I, I've got the carpet coming um, later this week, and I'm going to install that and then test fit the center console. And if I still goes in, great. If not, I can cut the very top of that pretty easily. So, if, you know, if I have to take a quarter inch or so off of it, it's really easy before it's covered with leather. Very difficult after it's covered. So the, um, you know, for the most part, this thing's done. Um, the same guy that's going to cover this is going to do my door panels and let's see the whatever you call these panels that go on the quarter windows in the back on either side of the uh, passenger seat I mean uh, either side of the rear seat so there's a panel that goes here and another one that goes here that's all molded um, I'm going to strip mine. A part of that is metal. The other part is uh, fiberglass or some sort of plastic. So I'm going to strip mine and uh, get them all prepped. The entire thing is going to be covered with foam and leather. I say leather. It's, um, it's the material that's on these seats. So the center, I think, of these seats is actual leather, but the balance of it is whatever the automotive industry uses to match leather, some form of synthetic leather, leather or vinyl. And these are 2007 seats, so getting material to match is very simple. And uh, so my, my door panels, the two back panels, um, the center console, 
they'll all be covered in the same material. My door panels are, I have to make from scratch um, because I don't have anything in my door anymore. There's no window handle, no door handle, no lock, no nothing. So I will, uh, I'll put a fake lock in the top of the door in the hole right here just to make it look like there's a lock there only because I didn't think about plugging that hole but really um, you know there's nothing there so I'll make the uh, blank door panel and then the uh, upholstery guy will cover it sorry for moving the camera while I'm talking very annoying um, man, I'm just gonna sit down. <laughs> All right, so I'll make these panels, and uh, probably out of eighth-inch MDF, and I'll put a plastic sheet behind them, but uh, to you know make it waterproof. And I found a place online that makes uh, or sells armrests for hot rods so I'm going to pick an armrest that I like and uh, figure out where I want it in the door panel and go ahead and make all the arrangements for it to mount so that once the uh, so that the door panel can be covered and can accommodate that uh, area where the armrest is going to be and then once I get it back I can install it all uh, pretty easily. Uh, I think that's it. You know, we're really talking about center console, so this is mine. And uh, I know there's uh, probably a ton of better ways to do it, but, but at least I can say I did this one all by myself. Um, the only other thing I may add is I may put a cubby in here for my cell phone. But I'm um, a little bit on the fence about that. Um, there's a lot of real estate right here to do something. I don't know if a cubby is the best use of space, but I'm still thinking about that. Probably something there. My only advice to people planning on doing this is just do it and document it and get the video out on YouTube so other people can see how you do it. It is not rocket science. I think in the overall scheme of things, the upholstery is rocket science. Like those guys are craftsmen, and uh, and you know if you're willing to endure the learning curve and the cost associated with that, doing it yourself is you know always great. But I'm at the choosing my battles phase of the project, and I just want that to look really good. And I don't, I think I could eventually get there, but I don't think I could get there uh, any cheaper or in any shorter period of time than having somebody else do it. So I found a great guy, he's gonna do it, and it'll be phenomenal. And when every, anybody says anything about my car and gives me shit about some part of it, I can say, well, I did it all myself, except for my upholstery, and I'm fine with that, so. All right, so this is the finished console. Um, well, hard to see because everything in the car is black, but here it is. Um, matches the seats reasonably well. Came out great. I've got a little uh, panel in the bottom of this, and then the bottom is unfinished. There's one fastener right here. It's a uh, like a four-inch landscaping timber screw, so pretty heavy. Um, thread on it and it's a T30, takes a T30. So I just got this thing where I wanted it, drilled down. It's right in the middle so I know it's missing the big uh, chunks of wire going down either side and uh, and then just drive the screw in with the impact drill and it, oop, it tightens this thing down really well with just that one fastener. It's sitting up under the dash, it's down on the tunnel so it really can't move, doesn't really need anything more than that. And I have this removable panel made uh, 
when we did the console just for that. So to recap, inside the console there's a 12 volt uh, power source like a cigarette lighter type thing and then there's a USB port that goes to the uh, uh, data link connector. A couple cup holders, windows are controlled right here, um, some more USB and then this side goes to the radio. It's USB and uh, eighth inch jack that tie to the radio. Um, that's pretty much it as far as what you know you can see. The Ron Francis I start is mounted on the back side. And, um, oh, I'm sorry, the ignition is right here as well. The thing that keeps flashing red is the uh, Ron Francis I start button. But it worked out perfect. The sh shifter worked out perfect. This shifter boot and bezel that I bought, um, I'm not sure what it came from. It's just some <clears throat> aftermarket thing or something I got from uh, CJ Pony Parts. This is just a little leather boot that is attached underneath here. Uh, underneath this, there's the weather boot. So the one that really separates the outside from the inside. Uh, this is just something to be pretty. The lights came out good, so if I push this button and open the door, got lights on either side here, and I added two lights in the back uh, that light up the floor behind each seat. So it, it works great. Um, since we're talking about interior, and there's so little of it. So these are the door panels. There isn't a whole lot to them. Um, the original door panels uh, had door handle and window handle, like everything in them, had a bunch of stuff in them. And uh, I eliminated all that from this car, so I needed something that, you know, didn't have any openings, uh, maybe a little more modern than what was original. So this is what I came up with. I think I have a, another video that shows how I made this. In fact, I know I do. So we'll just consider this video to be the wrap-up one for that as well, but um, it's pretty straightforward. It's um, a hardboard material as the substrate, and then uh, these armrests I bought from a company that just kind of sells hot rod armrests. And um, again, had it all covered with the same material that's on the center console. And uh, the other thing I had done at that same time, let me move the camera over here, are these quarter panel trims. So the original version of this, I got pollen on everything, so excuse that. But the original version, this was painted and this was covered with some sort of uh, vinyl that matched the interior, or maybe it was just black of the uh, original 66 Mustang. There was an ashtray here. There was a window crank hole right here. So I closed up that window crank hole, cleaned all this up. This, uh, this separates from this. There's some screws on, on the back side that connect it in a few places. So I took it apart, cleaned all this up, filled in that hole, filled in the ashtray hole, uh, both with fiberglass. And um, then I had it covered at the same time as the console and the door panels, so it all matched and they you know fit back in here perfectly they seem to match the seats and everything perfectly so i'm really happy with it um i think you know, there isn't a ton of stuff you can do on the interior of these cars but i like my interior i think it came out good um, my seats just to recap the seats are 2007 mustang seats which do not easily fit in a 66 Mustang. But if you're willing to, uh, to take the time, you can make them fit. And they fit well. They actually fit to where, uh, and I'm you know, reasonably tall, 6'2", but uh, when I first set these seats on the seat platform, my head was above the windshield, uh, the top of the windshield. So I knew that wasn't going to work and, you know, need my head to not touch the roof of the car. And uh, I lowered them. I modified the seat platforms pretty heavily to lower these. And 
there's a video on that. Um, that was a lot of work, but it was definitely worth it. The car's extremely comfortable um, and plenty of leg room, particularly on the passenger side. Uh, there's just a ton of leg room because you don't have a clutch, a brake, and an accelerator in the way. In the back, there's no leg room. There's more leg room in the back than a 2020 Mustang convertible. Uh, and there's probably about the same leg room in the back as a 66 Mustang, but this car isn't really for passengers. The back of the car will be uh, primarily for luggage or just for looks, groceries, whatever. Otherwise, the um, interior is sort of straightforward. <clears throat> I put speakers in the kick panels, like I bought kick panel trim with the six inch speaker hole in it and then I uh, bought speakers I wanted uh, that, that are tied to the retro sound radio. Um, my carpet, <clears throat> carpet was an integral part of doing the center console because the very last step, which I didn't show on video, the very last step on the center console was to test fit it with the carpet installed. And I'm using the plush carpet with the mass backing on it. And uh, so overall, it's pretty thick. It's, you know, loosely, it's about three quarters of an inch thick. Now, you can really compress it to probably a quarter inch, but just the loose version of it laying out on the floor when you first open it up, it's kind of thick. So I installed that, and then I put the center console in. And as anticipated, I had to cut the very front of the center console, the part that goes up under the dash. So I, I got that all perfect before I took it to the guy to get it all covered. And when I brought it back, it, it just fit in here absolutely perfectly. So I was really happy with the way it came out. So this is, uh, this is mid April, 2020 right now. And everybody's at home self quarantining because of COVID-19. So uh, as a result, I'm getting caught up on all the video that I've shot and just never rendered and you know cleaned up and got on onto YouTube. So that's uh, one of the things I'm working on in addition to working from home, you know, from my regular job. So anyway, more to come.